Hello and welcome to tutorial number 40 in the Microsoft Visual Basic .NET programming tutorials and this tutorial is going to be a follow up of the previous tutorial and we're going to be learning how to create an auto updater for your application so in a previous tutorial we created this HTTP web request to take a string we'll take the source code from a website and we're going to be using this to take some text from a website and then compare it with the current version of our application so if you don't have this code right here go and follow the previous tutorial and learn about the HTTP web request and then come and watch this so go now okay so if you're still watching this then I predict that you've watched the previous tutorial and you have this code already well first of all we're going to need to design our auth data so right here on button one which you already had, we're going to change the text to check and that's just going to check for the latest update so if you double click this right here we have our code here from the previous tutorial but the first thing we're going to need to do is register an account on ripway.com so go to ripway.com, go to sign up and then log in and click here with my files. So once you pause the video now, sign up, log in and click on my files. Okay, once you've done that, we're going to need to create a text file on our Ripway account. So click on create text file and then where it says enter a file name, just type current version.txt and in here we're going to um we're going to see what our current version is. Now we're going to leave it as 1.0.0.0 for now and hit create. Okay, so now once we have this current version, just click it to get the link up here and take the link and put it into our HTTP web request right here. So every time we're checking for an update, it's going to check for the current version that we've updated on our website here and we're going to run this against the current version of the application so once you've done that the next thing you need to do is go up here to your project name click properties and then you see here in the assembly information you'll see the assembly version one zero 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 now you can change this but for now we're going to keep it as one zero 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 for the purpose of to of the tutorial but whenever you update your application you just add a one to this thing one two three four you know what I mean and that's how we're going to be using the auto updater now that's a bit that's a lot to take in in just a few minutes but hopefully you understood that and we can move on to the next part of the tutorial okay so the first thing we want to do is you want to take this and declare it as a variable so this that we're downloading right here is the latest version so we're going to say declare newest version as a string equals sr.read to end and it's going to take this stream reader here and declare that as the newest version now we need to take what the current version is of this application we're just going to type declare current version as string and as you've just seen there in the properties we saw the the current version which is one zero 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 and to get that all we type is application dot product version and that's just going to take the the product version which is one point zero point zero point zero okay now that we have these two declared all we need to do is type if newest version dot contains and in brackets current version then message whoops message whoop message box dot show you have the current version and then we're gonna say else message box dot show newer version available okay that was a lot to take in in just a few minutes but let's go over it okay so what it says here is it's going to download this web page right here which is only a txt file and that's going to say 1.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0. 
and then it's going to declare that 1.0.0.0 as the newest version then it's going to declare the current version as this application product version which is also 1.0.0.0 and we'll see that if we take the newest version that does contain the current version because they they are the same and I'm sorry I haven't explained this this dot contains just uh, something we can use with strings we can just say if apple dot contains a and it does because there's a there I'm not going to go into detail explaining that but it should be pretty straightforward so we know that newest version contains the current version because they're both the same so if we debug this and we hit check just give a few seconds sorry and just answer a question in the comments of my previous tutorial we're using the HCT web request because first of all in further tutorials we're going to be learning about how to send a login request to an API oh here it is by the way you have the current version and for web browser we're going to be using that when we use things like get element by ID or get elements by tag name and we're going to be using web browser then but for now we use the HTTP web request anyway back on to the tutorial and um, this says you have the current version that's because the if we look here 1.0.0.0 and we look on our application go to the properties the assembly version is 1.0.0.0 as well so now let's go back to ritway.com and click on edit and um, we're just going to change the last number to 1 and hit save now that's going to say that whenever we update our application let's say we make a new version of this we just add a new label to it or we just make a new version a new exe and we would just take the assembly information and ch change it to 1.0.0.1 and that'll be our newest version now if we check this and say this is the old version we all, ooh, let's check see if you have the latest version now we've s said that the latest version is 1.0.0.1 so this is now going to say that we don't have the newest version just give it a few seconds to load and there we go it says a newer version available now what we can do is we can go we've learned how to download and run a file we can just go into here new version available we can just you know download file we can download the new file and we can run it run a new installation etc so that's basically how you would create an auto updater and I'm not going to go into detail about the download the new application this is just so, something that you can think about if you want to something to try and take in so thanks for watching this tutorial and if you have any questions just please leave a comment if you have any suggestions or requests, leave a comment too. And please rate this video and subscribe.